Hello, everyone. Welcome for today's CNCF webinar, Kate's Cluster Vending Machine. I'm really excited for this one because I worked on a Kate's Cluster Vending Machine actually uh, 2020, 22 was it, at the beginning of 2022 with the projects of the CNCF which were available at this time. So everything was still very new and uh, the tools did not suit well with each other because yeah, they are still on the on the development and they really need to find out how things can work together. And now I'm very, very happy to create a new, uh, to, to present a new version of my Kate's cluster vending machine. And I'm really excited to share this with you folks and see what you, you are thinking about this. Just one thing, I have a new setup. So the light here, and I'm using my smartphone for recording. Hopefully the quality is a little bit better, but maybe some little technical issues could happen. So I'm sorry for this one. Okay, so I want to do a one take of this. So I'm not going to, to cut and uh, everything. So please, um, maybe there will be some uh, issues during the demonstration, but let's hope the demo gods are happy with me and... Uh, Everything works fine. So let me share my screen. So, and remove the stuff here. Okay. And share the slide just a second. Okay. So, as I said, Kate's Cluster Vending Machine is the title. And what I mean with a Kate's Cluster Vending Machine, I will explain in more detail. Maybe you visit couple of years ago, the, the first talk of this, and you can guess what's going on here, but um, if not, stay tuned, I'm going to explain this. So shortly to my person, yes, my name is Engin Didi. I'm working at Pulumi as a customer experience architect. I love cloud transformation, cloud enablement, uh, do this stuff since many, many years, um, working before in big enterprise uh, here in Germany, as you can guess from my accent. And I really love to continue everything. So CICD is my thing. I started everything with uh, cruise, uh, cruise control using and so you can guess um, where I started from. And uh, if you look now the tools uh, where we are now and everything is so much, much better, but still room for improvement. Uh, underneath you will see my, um, my socials. Feel free to, 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 to follow me if you want. I even have my GitHub account if you want to see on what kind of projects I'm working or customer issues I'm trying to solve. Okay, what you see now is, is, is a typical thing when you work with different cloud providers. You, you have AWS, you have Azure, you have Google, everybody has big, big, big services. And you sit there and you're like, okay, hey, what should I use now? What is the best service? And even if I know what's the best service, how do I connect them? Some want that you create um, uh, virtual uh, networks, you have to create subnets, firewalls, and so on and so on. So the combinations are big and the confusion is also big, as you can guess. So what what could be a possible solution if we, well, not, not talking now about the solution, but yeah, the confusion is big and I want to show this awesome GIF. So that's how I feel. That's sometimes also um, everybody working with different cloud providers feel is like, why is it not working? I mean, it, it worked now, then you change something and it's not working again. Or there's a new update of a specific service and you need to find out um, what's going on when you want to update or you want to create new infrastructure. So you probably guessed it and you probably heard this because platform engineering is now a topic. If you're on social media or you're going to conferences, you will see that platform engineering is the, is the big thing. Everybody is talking about platform engineering. The maturity level is already on a place where we have plenty of offerings for platforms where you can just install them and you get the best breed, the best selection of tools outside already created for you. So platform engineering, a very, very big topic. And actually also this year at KubeCon Paris, again, platform engineering gets its own track and a uh, whole dedicated day on the 19th. I'm going to speak on this one, so uh, look out for me. I'm going to uh, have a lightning talk, so feel free to join this one, but not, not about me. Let's talk about platform engineering. 
So to put you into the context to say, okay, where we are now with this talk, what I'm going to cover with this talk, if we see here now the capabilities, the platform capabilities and the platform interface um, map here, now to say, okay, on top, documentation, project templates, graphical user interface, API, CLI, that's one part. And then of course the capabilities um, underneath the infrastructure providers and the, uh, the platform capability providers. So a good platform, of course, that's what's, what the customers needs, what the user are asking for, because at the end of the day, that's why we build it, or that's why we're going to provide this as platform engineers. And um, you should discuss all the offerings and everything you want to create, of course, with your users. So these are some conditions, I would say, they are really independent of the actual solution you choose, um, very important for you. Do what the customers want and talk with the customers, work together. Everybody is talking about this. We need to work uh, collaborations or platform engineering and treating uh, your, your infrastructure as a service uh, is a good way to interact, to discuss with your, your users, the internal teams, for example. So where we are now with this talk, I'm going to cover now in this talk um, project templates, a graphical user interface, and uh, of course, documentation. And uh, we, we also talk about the way to provide environments and infrastructure uh, resources for our customers, for our internal users. And this is how we set now the scene for this talk. So let's dive into it. Before I, uh, I go into um, further into the talk, um, there is a reference implementation I'm currently working on it, so stay tuned on this one. Um, there are going to be a talk soon called Gain Platform Superpowers with the Kebab Stack. So I'm very happy about uh, the acronym I created here, so stay tuned. Um, for more, at the moment, I'm not going to spoil this, but that's a good thing. If you already followed me for a while and you, you were, watched some of the other webinars I gave or some of the talks I gave, you can guess it. Some of the pieces are now working together and uh, the, the talk from before with another one are the foundation for this one. So everything keeps on evolving and uh, it's going to be a nice reference implementation. So for now, I'm going to keep my secret, but um, in April at GitOpsCon in Seattle, I'm going to talk about um, the Kebab stack. So, as I mentioned before, no, you're still right. You're still in the in my in my webinar, so it's not. Uh, I didn't switch the webinar, but as I mentioned before in the introduction, 2022 in January. So it's really really uh two uh, two years ago nearly. Uh, I gave this talk. With our, with our older version. So here again, Kubernetes cluster vending machine with V cluster. So I already emphasize one of the tools here and say, okay, um, how are we going to provide? At this point, for me, the, the focus was really on uh, giving uh, Kubernetes um, and don't have uh, the connection to the under to some uh, cloud infrastructure. So here I just wanted to show, okay, how are we going to um, to provide Kubernetes cluster, V clusters, virtual Kubernetes clusters um, to the customers. Again, I'm not diving here now into V clusters. There are already many, many uh, talks to uh, covering this topic and saying, okay, uh, how V cluster is working. There are already um, new distributions. So you have now a Geek EKS distribution, you have a K0S uh, distribution, you have the K3S, Kate's uh, distribution. This was all not available at the beginning when I started with this one, I think it was only uh, K3S and um, vanilla Kates. But again, now the solutions are much, much better. And there's, I think also uh, the people from Loft also offering a pro version where you get uh, much more functionalities. So um, that was the initial talk here. Let me put um, this away. So. There is the QR code where you can check the, the, the documentation. So I wrote a blog article about this. Um, there's a YouTube video about this. I also put the link here. So feel free to, to, to watch this and see. Uh, don't, be, don't be surprised. It was 2022 and uh, 
everything was in the beginning so it was not really um one of my best talks i ever gave but still uh, it's the content which is important so uh, feel free to follow up on this one if you had not and yes of course give uh, cloud islama but also a follow on uh, on twitter x um he's really doing some nice content all around kubernetes and cloud and very uh, he's very engaged also in platform engineering so let me okay the quintessence about the first version I created for the vending machine was I use Argo as the central uh, orchestration system to say, okay, that's the delivery. If I order something, if I created a pull request because I needed now uh, a new virtual cluster for my different teams, I went into my uh, Git repository and then I just created a new uh, application, uh, a resource of type application and um, created a pull request, waited that the platform team, for example, depending again on your maturity level and the way you want to work, um, created the pull request, and then um, the platform team, the owners of the platform could uh, review this again, approve this, and then uh, Argo detected any change and deployed this one um, and created then for the different teams, whatever topology you have, then um, dedicated a Kubernetes, virtual Kubernetes cluster to use for them to deploy then their application. So that was the quintessence of this. Um, very, very basic, um, but it was interesting. And it worked. It really worked fine. But now um, we evolved. We understood how things uh, are working now, how we can uh, increase the automation, the tool itself, Argo itself really, really increased also, gained new functionality, uh, just uh, to mention one thing, application set, for example, application sets are now um, really mature, they're inbuilt in Argo CD before it was their own um, controller, you had to install uh, separately if you wanted to use um, application set, now everything works really fine. So we have now the tools to create an even better experience for our users. And another thing joined. Yes, Backstage was known also at this time, but now Backstage becomes even more important to say, okay, I want to provide now an, an user interface uh, with, a, with a big framework behind this where I can just create stories where I can create software templates for my user to consume. I can create a catalog for all my projects working in. So the discoverability is inbuilt in Backstage and also the way to self-serve your, your infrastructure using Backstage. So Backstage really went into this and changed much of the Kate's cluster vending machine approach I had uh, two years ago where I really used, for example, Argo UI and um, GitHub, for example, or your, your Git repository as a way of a user interface. And as you can get, um, not everybody um, maybe know how to use GitHub. Not everybody knows how to, uh, to use the UI of Argo, for example. Maybe you don't want to give people access to the, uh, to the UI of Argo. So there are many, many reasons why the first version uh, had his flaws and why now, for example, having Backstage as a solution really, really helps here to create this interface without building this whole engine because Backstage, everything created from the good folks of uh, Spotify contains everything. And I just did, I can just adapt this and create my, my, my software templates or my golden paths as they, we call them. If you, oops, if you want to know more um, there is, as I mentioned before, I already made a talk about this so one called Enabling Self-Service Infrastructure on Any Cloud with Backstage on Pulumi. Here, I really discuss how to configure Pulumi as an infrastructure as code solution with Backstage and execute then your software templates so Pulumi can roll out your infrastructure. You see now we, we made the jump to uh, infrastructure. So before we were only able to create virtual cluster only on the Kubernetes uh, API. And now we are also able to, to um, define and deploy infrastructure on different cloud providers, which is really cool. So this was one talk. And the second talk 
is uh, how to start building a self-service infrastructure platform on Kubernetes. And now here entered a new piece into the, the, the stack. At, in this talk, I used Flux as a GitOps engine. Here I'm using again Argo, but now I we could combine backstage Pulumi on Kubernetes using Flux. That was also very, very awesome. So go watch this talk if you want to see this, um, this solution. And now, as I mentioned before, you see the different pieces are working together. So we discovered one way. We discovered, okay, Pulumi and Backstage. We discovered how we can add now the GitOps engine back again. So that was also very interesting. And as a last point, yeah, go watch this. And uh, that's going to be awesome. So now to give you a little, little introduction to say, okay, what is Pulumi? You may heard about Pulumi or not. So I, I think that's very, very uh, important to understand. Again, um, the solution I created here because I use Pulumi as uh, infrastructure as code tool, not only to, um, to provide a user story, a self-service user story for the customers, but also to bootstrap for me everything. So. The architecture I created here uh, needs also deployed on uh, on a cloud provider. For example, the, the, the GitOps Kubernetes cluster needs to be um, provisioned. So this is everything done via Pulumi. So what is Pulumi? Uh, Pulumi is a, a modern infrastructure as code tool. Um, you can use generic programming languages. So that's a, it's a very, very cool functionality. So uh, Pulumi currently supports uh, Go, TypeScript, JavaScript, uh, .NET, uh, Java, Python. So every common uh, generic programming language is supported. So you can just use, if you're used to this, for example, to create your application logics or your, your web services or whatever you are working on already, for example, in Python or TypeScript, you can just continue working um, and defining them uh, in Python, for example. And then you can guess or you can use all the mechanism your programming language is offering, creating abstractions, creating loops, creating conditions, and then uh, deploy your infrastructure. Volumi is a declarative approach at the end. So you use an imperative programming language to create a declarative state. The state gets stored. And that's a really, really awesome. Works with any major cloud provider. So that's completely fine. And which is also very important, uh, it's completely open source. So you can use Pulumi, no credit card needed. Um, and uh, if you want, for example, to, to host your own um, state file, uh, you can do this. You can create an S3 bucket and upload your state files there. Or you can use the free tier on our managed SaaS provider. So um, it's a generous free tier You can uh, really um, store plenty of resources there. Uh, we take care of this. And let me continue. So just again, these are the, the, the three columns. I can divide now, Pulumi say, okay, we have the build part where we support different programming language, which is what one language is missing here. That's YAML. So YAML is also supported. And uh, every other language I just mentioned, uh, it's just embeds fine into the IDE. You don't need to, to change uh, an IDE or you don't need to, you can continue what you're used to it. And then you can consume um, Pulumi packages uh, with the, the package system of your programming language, or you can share Pulumi programs using the package system, creating an NPM package and sharing them via Artifactory. That's very awesome. In the middle part, we have our ecosystem. Yes, you can use plenty of different uh, cloud providers, which is very awesome and gives you the flexibility and the power to, to configure and create bigger stories and say, okay, if I create now, for example, my, my Kubernetes journey, it's going to pro provision in a multi-cloud approach or multi-service. So that's also cool. Right part, and this is the last thing I'm going to explain, is um, CI systems, for example, everything where you can um, integrate Pulumi. So uh, Pulumi is not... Um, inversive in anything. So you can just continue use what you're already using. So Pulumi is not dictating you um, what you have to use. It's really up to you. It's a building block uh, you can use uh, in your existing journey. Again, here on this slide, Codefresh and Octopus deploy, as we know, now um, uh, merge together. So we should update also this slide. Okay. How does it look like? 
how does a Pulumi code look like in this uh, in 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 a very vanilla form. So I just created now three examples. I can I did not want to choose now every language. Um, so here, creating as S3 bucket in Go, this is the code you need to create. So no conditions, no loops or something like this inside. This is really written everything down. You have your main function and then you just say S3 new bucket because you import um, your, your AWS module and then you can just create your S3 bucket. Um, same code, same functionality using TypeScript. Again, this is um, importing your, your NPM package for AWS and then also using the S3 bucket and then exporting the, for example, the bucket ID. And last but not least, as you can see with the wiggly lines underneath, I'm not uh, using Python every time in IntelliJ, so I did not configure the interpreter, but um, this is the way you would do this in Python if you create a Python program. So similar, this is very beautiful. I like this very, very much. I mean, yes, I may be a little bit biased, but that's awesome. Okay, so let's go to the action because I don't want to bore you too much with um, all the theoretical part. So let's head over and um, give you an introduction on the code. So. Okay, I'm going to take this here over. So I have here my Xcali draw. Before we head over to to um, the actual code, let me draw you what we go, what we created here. So um, everything runs, of course, here using. AWS. So I chose AWS as the place where my vending machine lives on. You can change this also. You can say, okay, I'm not going to use AWS. I'm going to use Azure. That's not the problem. So I have here my AWS. What I created now on top of it. So let's see if we can find, okay. We have now our EKS cluster, so created an EKS cluster. And I like to call this one, this is our GitOps infrastructure. This is where all the magic happens. So we have our EKS cluster, we have, uh, it's called the GitOps infrastructure. And on, on this GitOps infrastructure, we install now using Pulumi, so let me, uh, grab here another one. So we use Pulumi to define this infrastructure. Now, come on. So, so we define with Pulumi the infrastructure I created for this case. Um, so it's z uh, zero zero infra, and this one is deploying the GitOps infrastructure. So next part, I want to deploy uh, backstage. Okay. So. But here comes now one of the, the, the one plot twist. So I just, so, and let's take a container. So what we do in our backstage program, let me write this. We create a container from the backstage code, because backstage at the end, as I said, it's just a uh, TypeScript pro project uh, using yarn to, to, to build everything. There's a Docker file inside. So I'm using Pulumi to create a Docker image. So not using Docker build, everything is inside Pulumi. So using Pulumi to create a container from backstage, and this container gets deployed into uh, the, the Elastic Container Registry. That's one part. 
Um, what I did not mention is here in this part is I create also, and let me put this uh, here. This is GitHub. So I also deployed the, the initial Argo CD deployment. So let me put this here. Argo CD. So I'm also deploying inside Kulumi using the Helm release and release um, resource. I also deploy Argo CD with, and now comes the clue, a link to the initial repository because we would like to handle everything, including Argo itself in the GitOps way. So just kickstarting the stuff, uh, provisioning some, some resources maybe we need because of uh, secrets and so on inside our GitOps infrastructure it, it, deploying Argo CD and telling Argo CD, and now please look into this uh, repository. So for this case, we're using the so-called apps of app pattern, app of apps, oops. Okay. And here we have then also the definition of any additional tools. So what happens now here, and we change now the, the, the color. We deploy now via the F of apps pattern additional tools. So we will be going to install and now comes the whole stack. So we're going to install Kiverno. Uh, let me see that I um, uh, Argo CD again. Yes, because we want to manage this one. Backstage. Matrix server. And the Polumi operator. And last but not least, external secrets. So these are all the tools. We, oh no, I just one tool is missing, of course, a V cluster. Okay, so that's tools we're going to install via the app of apps pattern. So just uh, giving the, the context. So we start with the zero zero infrastructure deployment, um, deploying the EKS cluster, deploying Argo CD, pointing to a GitHub repository where we then install via application of uh, Argo CD, additional applications, including Argo CD itself. So in the future, we just need to update then here the Argo CD here um, and keep everything on the GitOps way. And when this is finished, because Backstage is not going to deploy now, um, we're going also to... Um, to build the backstage image and push the backstage image in the container registry. And here comes now the clue. So how does the backstage deployment knows um, about the image and which um, version we are going to use? So let me take this here. Um, we also deployed the image update. So Argo CD, let me get this one here plus the image update, and the image update is using a pod identity. So that's a very new feature. So additionally, what we're going to deploy is a pod identity in this one here. because uh, here in the pod identity, we defined the namespace of Argo CD and the Argo CD image updater. So the image updater is now able to log into the uh, Azure container registry, uh, Elastic container registry, and uh, check for new images. So the moment we push stuff here, the image updater detects there's a new image available and will then annotate the application. I did not create a write back here, um, just holding in Argo CD because the image is already here. When I destroy everything and need to redeploy this, it will automatically get the latest one. 
So um, that's one thing. So there is no right back, but of course you could do also a right back to be completely on the fine side if really uh, something happens and you need to recreate this specific uh, hash version of uh, Argo CD. Um, you could do this also, but here in this case, the right back just goes for the Argo CD, annotates the application with the new tag and then uh, modifies this. So that's the whole stack. So how does it look like? So um, before I show this one, let's go into the code. So, and let me. So, as I mentioned before, um, we have here the different. Uh, Folder structure, I created a mono repository just because of laziness. Uh, it's a demonstration. You could split it a little bit more if you want, for example, getting rid of the backstage templates and the GitOps repository could be also own repository, but that's for demo purposes, it's very handy. So I have here my infrastructure, as I mentioned before. So um, here, let's dive into the code. So creating um, our VPC. So just scroll a little bit over this. You can watch the code. I will share the details for the code. So creating the VPC, creating the Kubernetes cluster with some properties. So that's our GitOps infra cluster. And now you see I'm going to install the add-on here, uh, an EKS add-on for a pod identity agent. That's very cool. So this one is created. And as I mentioned before, I would like that um, a specific um, service account can con uh, connect to um, the container registry. For example, I create here the specific assume and tag session role on the service pod and assign here. Yes, that's a little bit uh, broad here that everything is by star. Um, you could also tweak this a little bit down and separate uh, the, the different actions from each other. Again, that's a demonstration. Create here a policy and create a, um, a role policy, attach the, the role policy, attach to the role. And now comes the pod identity association. So I say now, hey, my EKS cluster um, connect to the role on, and this is the important place. So I say which namespace and which service account. I don't need to set any annotations on uh, some kind of Helm uh, repos uh, Helm deployments because I need to set the a specific ARN to um, the service account. Like with the IRSA approach here, I can just create the pod identity association. That's really awesome. Um, create here a Kubernetes provider programmatically using JSON. And as you can see, here comes now the deployment of Argo CD. So I created an abstraction called Argo CD, which gets uh, some initial objects, as I said, the repository where we're looking at. And uh, after this, I also want to provide um, my, my um, Pulumi access token for my um, Pulumi operator uh, for the external secrets, because I'm going to use um, Pulumi ECS uh, secret management um, using external secrets. And this one needs the, an access token. So it's a chicken and hen. So somewhere you have to provide a token for the initial one. And then everything is uh, handled on this way. So this was the infrastructure deployment. When we have a look how Argo um, how I create the abstraction, as I said before, so people don't need to know that, okay, you need to create a release here. And here I create the Argo CD apps where I, initially, where I read in the initial objects to deploy and then create also a, a class in cluster secret. So that's, uh, that's all. So, okay. And now we head over to our backstage deployment. So this is here, the backstage deployment, also very, very quick. This is even quicker than the other one. So as I mentioned, I create an ECR repository, do some uh, auth uh, authentication stuff here, and then build the image. So I'm using here the Pulumi local command, which is just calling yarn install, yarn uh, build backend, and then calling here the Dogger image. That's all. 
and then uh, this will automatically push to the ECR instance. So this is also done. And uh, last but not least, let's head over. So everything is installed. Argo CD is installed. Argo CD is running, pointing to the Git repository where he's now looking into the GitHub's folder. And now when we have a look, what are we going to install as an initial? Yes, as an initial application we're going to install is called GitOps Management. I just called it like this and say, hey, please deploy now my app of apps inside here. Everything you will find inside this folder management, please deploy. Go recursively through it and maybe exclude some of the stuff I don't want um, that it gets deployed. So this is now the deployment, as you can see here now. What is um, this code now doing? It goes now in the management folder and looks up all the YAML files. So here it will go for the apps of app and deploy additional um, stuff for us. So that's that's very, very cool. So here we go through and um, yeah, GitOps management and then deploy additional tools here. Uh, where is it? Um, back again. So that's this part. And now I created also a, a folder for, for apps. So I told him, hey, please go into GitOps Teams and into the apps folder. There you will find uh, applications. Same goes for the cluster folder here. And the last one is the V cluster folder. And this one's, there are already some applications running into it, but you can see there are some V clusters and there are already some applications deployed. Everything which gets now pull requested will land in some of these folders and the system will look into this. Same goes here for the applications, so just configure and Kiverno backstage and everything. So that's relatively uh, straightforward. Again, um, for giving you insight with the image updata, this is the annotation I did to look up for my uh, ECR instance. Um, the update strategy is digest to say, hey, when every time when the digest is changing, then please update the image. And uh, the Helm repository um, the tag you need to update is now under backstage image tag. As you can see, backstage image and then tag. I did not overwrite this here, but this is the way inside Helm. So when there's a new image, the image updater will update this one via set parameter. Okay, that's very awesome. So this is all done. We set here and we come to the last point. Um, this is here, the, the templates for backstage. So I created three templates, one for V cluster. So um, creating here a, a templatized uh, application of Argo, as you can see, getting the values here and uh, creating also a catalog info. And same goes for uh, microservices or for Helm deployment, if I want to deploy a Helm chart. And uh, if I really want to create a, a physical cluster, so not a virtual one, if I want to go to a cloud provider, I created now here a template for DigitalOcean. So it's a DO cluster. And as you can see here, um, I'm pointing here now in the application to a Git repository inside GitOps Teams clusters. So when we can see GitOps Team clusters with the name of the cluster, and inside here we have our Pulumi YAML program. So that's also very great. So I created a Pulumi YAML program. Here you see um, using all the resources of Pulumi. I could create this also in TypeScript and just point to a TypeScript repository. But here I just want to templatize also this YAML using Backstage. So um, everything is templatized. And as you can see, creating the Kubernetes cluster, taking care that an Argo service account is connected because I want to connect um, every cluster in a hub and spoke to um, my main cluster. So here everything goes in. And at the, the end of the day, I'm going to, um, to create a specific Kubernetes secret in the host 
GitOps cluster in the GitOps infra that Argo CD can detect this and connect the, the clusters to, um, to Argo CD. So creating a specific secret with the annotation Argo CD cluster is the way to go. So, okay. Um, if I create, okay, that's maybe something also to mention here. If I'm going to create this using um, uh, V cluster, I created here, um, where is it? Uh, management, Kiverno. So here's a specific Kiverno policy. And this Kiverno policy is also, V cluster is creating a secret with the cube config. So when a secret is detected from Kiverno with the, uh, with the admission controller, it reacts on this and then creates with the generate a secret again of type uh, um, cluster and adds all the informations here. So this is all the parts we need to automatically create our hub and spoke. So if we go back here, so when everything is created and I go, and a user comes now, and uh, let me, where is, so we take you, and let's take this. This is now backstage. So, okay. The user comes, uses backstage. Backstage will then create a pull request in GitHub. With um, the definition with the new application. And um, this one gets then deployed on the cluster using uh, Argo. And at the end, when we create now, where is our Kubernetes sign? So, and uh, depending now, what is it? Is it a virtual cluster or is it the GitOps? Uh, is it Pulumi? Creates the, the Kubernetes cluster and attaches, oops, let's do this here, and attach this new cluster as a hub and spoke approach to our main Argo CD, not sharded again uh, after a certain of time, maybe that's the the, the containers uh, the, the clusters become too much. But every new cluster gets attached to this. Okay, so how does it look like? Let's have a look into the implementation. Uh, how things are running. So this is now the, let's display everything. Okay, so now we can see, ah, that's also stupid. Okay, um, these are all the applications deployed. As you can see, we have here the apps of app pattern. We can see that's all the applications I'm going to deploy. So we have um, the, the Argo CD, Backstage, Backstage Config, Kiverno, everything is here inside. Um, then also some app projects because we want to have a separation. That's very important. So I created for every team, I created its own project. Um, the infrastructure has its own project and uh, you can then separate everything. And Argo CD backstage here, as you can see, um, there is, uh, no, here's the manifest. You can see that it detected um, the new image tag and updates the backstage image tag. So this is also working. So um, this is now everything in backstage uh, in, in Argo CD. And if we can see the clusters, yes, we have uh, our clusters are also present here. So that's uh, very cool. Um, so now let's create a a new cluster. Let's create a digital ocean cluster and a V cluster so to see that everything is working. So let's open um, backstage. Okay. So this is backstage. Um, we see our templates are here, what I just mentioned before. We see um, 
the teams. So I created the similarity team because we want to use them in our templating. So the teams here are the teams you all, uh, the, the project you see also in Argo CD. So there's the relation to this to have a separation. And now I can click on create. I see my different stories and I would like to create now a second V cluster. So I give it a name. My V cluster. Um, backend or the backend team. Let's give it a stage. And we say now the owners are the team deployment B. So I can review. Ah, okay, I am. Okay, we call it backend and say review. Okay. So what we are doing now, you can also fully automate this if you don't want um, to, to create a pull request. But I create now pull request. I can see now which resources gets created, as I mentioned before, the catalog info, and the most important part here, creating the, the application, pointing to the vCluster um, Helm chart, some values for, for testing purpose. So I can check this now and say, yep, that looks fine. I agree on this one. I say squash and merge. Go back to Argo CD, and because we don't want to wait, we just say, please refresh. So, and we, sh and we see here now the V cluster backend deployment gets deployed. So let's have a look in our case. So we can see now V cluster B starting to run, that's completely fine. So now let's see the secret. And we can see Argo CD created also a secret for, um, Kiverno created a secret now uh, on um, the, the secrets uh, we cluster created, created a secret automatically for Argo CD that Argo CD detects as a new spoke. And when we go to settings and we go to clusters, we can see now deployment B is there. Let's see if the API is really reacting. Yes, successful 1.29. That's completely fine because there's no application deployed. That's the reason it was not um, checked for the status. So that is working fine. And now with the time and everything, I'm not going to provision a digital ocean one. Ah, let's do this. Let's create a digital ocean one also. So we go to digital ocean, choose, and we say my DO for backend. Uh, we say that's a de development one. The owners are development B. We say preview. We say again, create. This takes a little bit more time. Yes, of course, it's a cloud provider, depending on the cloud provider. Um, it can take a little bit of time. So what we see now here is again, yes, we see the application. That's completely fine because we want to point in the folder where our Pulumi program is because this is uh, we need to deploy this also. Could be a Helm chart also, so it's absolutely up to you. Um, you could create a generic Helm chart with some parameters to have an abstraction and just call here the Helm chart and just overwrite the stuff again as you wish. So everything is filled out. That looks good. We're also creating now here the Argo CD cluster inside our GitOps infra cluster where the operator is running because we need this to have um, access to it as a spoke. And we pass via external secrets, we pass um, the digital ocean token to this. That's also fine. So I can now um, squash and merge this. Okay, that's running good. And let's see. Um, okay, this one is also checking here the cluster. So let's go to um, apps Pulumi because I'm using the cloud to store my stuff. So we should 
hopefully see ah wait we forgot to roll out the stuff so let's go back here and then we go to cluster because it takes some couple of seconds um, to roll out the stuff so we should now see in clusters yes so it rolled out the development b so and we are here program and stack get roll out so we expect now hopefully that the deployment starts yep we can see my do backend is kicked off and this should when we see the details create now a cluster we see the kubernetes cluster let's have a look to digital ocean how does it look like we go to kubernetes and yeah, the Duo cluster gets created. It should hopefully be soon there. Yep, that's the Duo cluster. Uh, this can take a couple of seconds, but while this is doing, let's go ahead and deploy an application on this one. So I created here now the generic uh, deploy Helm chart task. So this is um, just completely random. So we can say pot info, pot info backend. Uh, the owner is the document is the development team B. And um, I don't need to, if I don't give a stage because we are using application set um, and uh, using the, the matrix here, I can just disable this one. And um, that's not uh, bothering us. It will deploy the pod info to every stage. So this is uh, really to fan out. So I'm, I'm not thinking anymore stages. I don't need to know how many clusters I have for prod or whatever. If I want to deploy this application to all the clusters which are labeled uh, as owner, for example, development team B, I can just roll this out now. So we are not anymore on this uh, low level application we are now really going on scale and using application set controller so how does it look like so when we go back to GitOps, um to teams and we look for apps i just want to show you so this is the way here you see application set and this is the selector as you can see here I say everybody gets in team A, development team A, the pod info, independent of what clusters they are using. I don't care which stage and what clusters they are actually. I just know this Argo CD is a hub and spoke. It's connected. It has some kind of labels capability. So I know this one, um, I need to deploy this one to um, to the clusters which own, which are owned by the team. So just roll this out. So this is with the generator cluster, there are many more generators. So try to use, get a little bit time to see if um, this is working. So that should normally be relatively finished now on 192. Okay, that's... Um, should hopefully be soon finished. Let's see where we are. I think he's now just, okay, the default cluster is already there. So that should be normally done in any second. So he's just um, waiting for the node provisioning. This one, come on. If a second, if you watch this on replay, please uh, go ahead and um, um, fast forward this part where we just ran wait for the digital ocean. Ah, now it's done. God, thank God. So I stop, stop. If you're fast forwarding, it's already um, over. So 
this one is great. As you can see, role binding secrets, everything gets created. So I expecting now under settings clusters now also my digital, and there is it. Here's the digital ocean cluster is also deployed. And let's see the capabilities. Yes, it belongs to the team development T. The environment is a dev environment. Yep, that's what we expect. And I just entered the cluster type. If maybe you want to just deploy stuff to be cluster, for example, you could also go for cluster type. You can add much, much more labels to it. So save this. We see it's also connecting. That's also perfectly fine working. So now let's deploy our deploy uh, our uh, pod info. And we go with uh, pod info. We take this version six, that's fine. So let's review this, create. This will also create a pull request. Everything works a little bit gated here. It's of course, you could also just push in main if you feel completely YOLO. So we are, no, no. let's see what changed. Yes, we get our application set and we want to hit all the clusters which are labeled team development B. And this is all the, the stuff we need. It will create uh, an application with the name and so on. So that's fine. Okay, so let's accept this one. Squash and merge. I don't have any notification and so on. So I just need to kick this by hand, this time in the real cluster. So I say, please refresh here. Uh, the OB, I uh, know. What I'm doing, um, it's in the apps. So I say, please apps refresh, because now I have the the development B pod info backend I want to deploy, and now I should see yes. So let's filter here for development team B, and we can see now here um, the the cluster is deployed for development B. The V cluster, the digital ocean one is deployed. And where is the application? Where is the application is deployed? Uh, what info application set? DO cluster app. Uh, just a second, um, what happened to my other cluster? Okay, now I just do a fast forward of a uh, uh, port forwarding. So sometimes the weak cluster here has a little issue. So this is not working fine. This is also, so let me just quickly move the port forwarding okay so let's check here what happened to this cluster so this cluster is here and we have the environment is, uh, ah, okay. The environment is B, so that's the reason he, ah, okay. There's an issue with the string splitting. That was unfortunately, okay. So my fault on this one, uh, the team was a little bit uh, too, too big. Okay, that's, that's my fault. But um, as we can see, the application gets deployed to um, to our um, DO cluster. So that's completely fine. And the other application is also deployed here. So when we see now the DO cluster application, where is it? Uh, here. So, and yeah, pod info is also deployed. So that's perfect. Um, we can also watch the logs and it's running. Okay, so, so far, so good. Um, just give a recap. So this is what we created.
created a GitOps engine, Argo CD, taking care via pull request to deploy everything via hub and spoke. Um, applications are there. And then every uh, um, business application development teams, for example, want to deploy, they can just go over backstage, order, for example, a Helm deployment or whatever, more fancier, creating also a Git repository and just Poke to uh, point to the GitHub repository. Argo CD will check for this when the pull request gets approved. And because we are using application set with the generator cluster and the labels, we can roll out the stuff without knowing which cluster gets hit, for example, because we don't need to know anymore. We can create now unlimited clusters and tell, um, roll this out. I can create more sophisticated roles. So this is completely up to my um how I like this and let's go to the slide. So um, we saw the action part, it's working. That's completely fine. Some uh, some tweaking is done on, the, on one of the um, deployments of the application because the splitting was not really nice. It uh, the, the cluster was detected as hub and spoke, but the, uh, the labeling was not really perfect. So it deployed it. Um, it de didn't deploy the deployment, uh, the pod info there. Okay, if you want to talk about this, if you're interested and you made it up to the end of this uh, webinar and you want to see it in action again, or you want to see, uh, you want to talk about this or tell me that's completely rubbish, for example, because I forgot some of the parts, feel free. Uh, I will be at the booth K13 at KubeCon Paris next uh, in two weeks. So I'm um, looking forward for this. If you want to get earlier more involved uh, with us, for example, join our community Slack. I'm also there. We can talk also here. Um, if you want to play around, please uh, sign up and try Pulumi AI. There are also plenty of talks about this one and upcoming workshops here on our side. Um, we have some here. This are the, the workshops the next couple of days. Um, feel free to join them. Uh, Pulumi.com resources. You can see any um, workshops. There are also plenty of Kubernetes workshops. So with this um, workshop is done and I hope you enjoyed this. So let me stop sharing. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, the Kate's cluster vending machine 2.0 now completely on steroids, completely pinned. So it's much, much better. Um, the ordering is much better. The, the automation creation of the hub and spoke approach is completely nice. And then I can now deploy application at scale without thinking about um, which cluster actually I'm deploying. I just uh, trigger capabilities um, and deploy the applications based on this capabilities, aka labels. Okay, then uh, thanks a lot and um, leave a comment. Let me know how you like this and um, see you next one. Bye.